This is just to show you the um, back EMF created by a potential relay on a refrigeration compressor which uses it. And the potential relay we only ever see from the front side, but at the back you've got a nice large coil which actually works by induced voltages uh, created by the field of um, the back EMF of the compressor and not actually through a dedicated potential. So when this system operates it's relying on a much higher voltage inducement to actually trigger it. What we're going to show you is uh, the, the back EMF created by the compressor to, to drive the relay and to open the contact which disables the start winding. So we'll just turn it on. And the left hand meter shows the primary source voltage and the right hand meter shows the back EMF voltage which we are getting off an interface connection here. As you can see, the left hand side is showing you the primary source voltage, the right hand side is showing you the back EMF which is being produced uh, well and truly after 75% RPM from the motor. And in some cases these can be C400 volts, so the relay has to be designed to deal with a very high back voltage in order to uh, operate. You don't normally get to see this because uh, unless you put a sort of meter inside the relay box at the associated locations you won't see that. But I've set this unit up for you to uh, interface the connections across the potential relay and demonstrate to you the voltage which is being produced. So um, it's, uh, it's quite surprising uh, for many people to find that uh, you get 240 odd volts coming in and uh, you get uh, over 400 usually or around 400 coming out to the relay. People, especially apprentices, don't often know that uh, that's, uh, that's the effect of the uh, back EMF or self-induction from the compressor and uh, the faster it goes the, the higher the voltage and it's all really dependent on uh, the amount of windings uh, that it's uh, cutting through as well. So the reason we use the potential relay is that unlike a current relay, the current relay places a winding uh, in series with another winding to the run winding. So the relay itself has a winding which activates a solenoid to disengage the start, but it's in series with the run winding. Now on larger motors you need the torque and you need the power and putting two windings in series will create R1 plus R2 and create a bit more of a volt drop. So the idea of the potential relay is not to interfere with any of the uh, uh, main run windings and uh, allow the motor to have great torque and disengage the start winding through field induction which removes any effect uh, of the windings themselves being responsible for that through a current sensing arrangement which we use for the current relay. So um, very interesting to say the least. So it's uh, good if you ever, ever get the chance to open up one of those um, potential relays and, and have a look inside it. Um, there's only really uh, three connections to them. We uh, have a look at it. We've got um, the coil which is across this one here and this one here uh, and we've got the switch side at the bottom and these terminals at the bottom here, the ones which are all grouped together, are just joining connections so they, they actually don't do anything at the back if we have a look, those particular connections sit underneath here but they, they're not connected to anything so there's only really uh, three connections although when you do look at the wiring diagrams in the units uh, they tend to be a bit overwhelming quite frankly um, but wiring them up is fairly simple and uh, we've got a picture of the potential relays wiring arrangement uh, uh, on the page here, so have a look for that. Um, but yeah, just uh, thought it might be of interest for you to have a look at that. Alright, see you later.